we're going to be talking about making 1D nanostructures. And just as a little review, 1D means that there's one dimension that's longer than 100 nanometers. The other two dimensions are smaller than 100 nanometers. So for 1D nanostructures, we're talking about things like nanotubes and nanowires. So they've got a very small um, length and height, I guess you could say, or width and height, and a really long length. In class, we poured popsicle mix, um, pudding mix, actually, into some popsicle molds. And this was a way to show that if you had a really, really small mold, you could do the same thing with a metal, a metal or some other sort of composite, um, and you could make very, very tiny nanowires in that way. So what I'm talking about here, like I mentioned, I'm talking about things like nanowires and nanotubes. Uh, other examples of 1D nanostructures would be whiskers, fibers, nano rods, and there's a term that comes along with these. Um, you'll hear it when people are talking about carbon nanotubes a lot. They have a high aspect ratio. What that means is a large length for their diameter. So I have some examples here of what a 4 to 1 aspect ratio would look like versus a 36 to 1. Um, imagine that those are tubes. Fun fact. There's a lot of nano words that are just made up as scientists make new structures and there's not a whole lot of consistency yet. So I wrote just for fun, what would you invent? Because somebody called these nano pants um, and nano kebabs, kebabs, nano dumbbells. Um, so anyways, that was just kind of for fun. And we talked about too, what are some of the uses of these? Like why do you even care about 1D nanostructures? Well, they're being used in a lot of automobile uh, applications. They're using these carbon nanotube fibers to make the car stronger, yet lighter. And there's all sorts of different applications. Um, they're using it in armor. They use uh, carbon nanotubes as transistors now instead of silicon. They're working on this. They can use uh, tall silicon nano... Uh, nano wires and they can use these with solar cells because they're really good at trapping light. Here's just a little animation of a carbon nanotube. So all right, how do we make these things? Well first is very similar to the method that we talked about with 0D nanostructure formation and that's spontaneous growth. You start with this super saturated solution and you basically cause the particles to start nucleating. And I'll talk about how you do that a little more specifically in a second here, but um, this method isn't that great. There can be a lot of imperfections and impurities. As you can imagine, things might not grow perfectly straight in this tube formation or this wire formation. Um, there are here some examples of things that have been grown this way. Nano belts, there are heli helical, nanostructures, nano rings, and here's the method that they're really talking about. Um, it's called vapor liquid solid or solution liquid solid. And in both of these, you basically start with an impurity that you put on some sort of a substrate. And then you evaporate something you're interested in so that it's basically attracted to this tiny little drop. And it grows and grows and grows as this particular species deposits onto that surface. There's a little basic animation that I'm going to show you of this happening. So I'll pull this up here. Okay, so here you can see all of these red particles are attracted to this yellow drop and um, it's actually growing from the bottom up and it grows and grows and grows and forms this nanostructure. Okay. You can control how big your nanowire is using this method depending on the size of the drop. You can imagine if you put a small droplet uh, as your catalyst, you're going to get a smaller diameter nanowire versus a medium size or a large size one. You can also grow it for a longer amount of time or stop it from growing and um, usually this is done at high temperatures. They can um, cause something to stop basically. Uh, growing. 
There's also another method you can use that's called template-based synthesis. And a template is something like a well plate, and I have a picture on here. Okay, this is just like your popsicle molds. And there's different ways um, you could uh, really just pour in whatever your substance is and uh, use your template that way. Or you can electroplate into it. Okay, and there's other methods too. There's a method called colloid dispersion, melt, or solution filling. And these can involve chemical reactions as well. Um, the one that we're going to focus on out of all of these is the electrochemical deposition. Okay, you can only do this for things that conduct electricity. So metals, alloys of metals, semiconductors, and some polymers do work for this. And here's an example of something that was made using electroplating. Okay, so let's talk about this. What you need for this method is you need something that's going to move through a solution uh, and be attracted basically toward the cathode, which has the negative charge. And at the cathode, there's cathode, there's going to be a reduction. AP Chem people, you've probably learned all about this. And then in order to um, keep this plating happening, you need uh, an electrode that's going to actually put some more of those ions back into solution. So let's watch a little video here of this happening. This is uh, about a minute long. She's got a pretty cool accent. If you want to coat a metal object with gold, this can be done by the process of electroplating. The object to be plated is first connected to the negative terminal of a battery, which is called the cathode. The a piece of gold is then connected to the positive terminal, or anode. The electrodes are then dipped in a solution containing gold ions. When the current is turned on, electrons start to flow from the battery to the cathode, giving it a negative charge. The positive gold ions in the solution are attracted to the cathode and form gold atoms. The equation for this reaction is gold 3 plus plus 3 electrons to make gold. Having removed the positive ions from the solution, they must be replaced to keep the solution neutral. So gold atoms from the anode dissolve into the solution. The equation for this reaction is gold going to gold 3 plus plus 3 electrons. This results in 3 extra electrons being formed on the piece of gold and these then travel back through the wire to the battery and the whole process is repeated again. So in her example she was using gold. In class we're going to do a lab where we uh, electroplate copper onto objects. If you put a template at the cathode the metal will fill in the pore. So um, imagine putting your little popsicle mold, for example, at that cathode end. It will fill up and you'll have a little nano wire there. Um, examples of products you could do this with silver, nickel, cobalt. I already mentioned copper and we saw the example of gold. Um, you could make these have less than 10 nanometers up to 200 nanometer diameters. You can do it with certain semiconductors and polymers. Here's some, it kind of looks like two brush bristles or something, but these were um, electroplated. These, uh, I'm not sure what these are made of actually, but it's a scanning electron microscope image. Okay, another way that you could do this besides using the electroplating um, method would be uh, CVD centrifugation, so chemical vapor deposition, once again, we've already learned a little bit about that. Um, Basically, you diffuse gas through some sort of a material. You're, you are required to use heat. And the centrifugation part is literally, imagine that carnival ride where you've got your back against the wall and you start spinning and spinning and spinning. And um, this is at high heats uh, for a long time, like an hour. And basically, the spinning um, is greater than the force of repulsion between particles, and so you get this separation and they fall into the little wells and just for fun let's watch just a little bit of some people on one of these rides check this out Again, you get the 
point, um, you can have your species basically be um, put into those little templates that are on the edges using the centrifugation method. Finally, there's electrospinning. Electrospinning is pretty cool and it basically requires that electrical forces overcome surface tension. So there, if you run an electric current through a fluid, you can destroy the surface tension that was once holding it together. And they can use this to create these um, big fiber networks. I'll show you an animation of what that looks like again. Um, you can have lots of different polymers that this works with. They can have very small diameters. Um, you can collect them in these fiber sheets like I was talking about and the shape of them really depends on what kind of liquid are you working with, what's the concentration, how much electric field did you apply, and how fast were you feeding that solution through. So let's take a look at this little animation here. Again this is called electro spinning. Okay, so we can start the solution coming from the syringe and we can start the voltage and see what happens. Current is increasing and now it starts to literally spin out this fiber mat. Pretty cool. So this would be a huge mess but this is another way that you can make one of those 1D nanostructures. And that is it for synthesizing these 